sir so students wish you all a very uh, good morning and now i am going to start with the indian desert and the coastal plains which is also a important physiographic division of our country and the topic which i am going to discuss today is from chapter number 2 physical features of india already we have discussed about some of the important physiographic divisions of our country such as the himalayan mountains the northern plains the peninsular plateaus and all and in our previous class we have discussed about the differences between the western ghat and the eastern ghat okay so now let us have some information let us have some knowledge about the indian desert as well as the coastal plains okay so the indian desert and the coastal plains they are the two separate physiographic features actually but here i am going to discuss together okay the indian desert and the coastal plains because they are a very small like uh, part of the indian physiographic division okay they are not so large or they does not cover a very large area like the northern plains or the peninsular plateau or the himalayas but they occupy a very small area but are very important in our country the indian desert we all have some idea about the indian desert okay so this indian desert it basically lies in the state of rajasthan okay the indian desert it is mainly found in the part of indian uh, rajasthan in the state of rajasthan actually so if we talk about the extension of this indian desert the indian desert it lies towards the western margins of the aravalli hills and it is an undulating sandy plain which is covered with the sand dunes okay so the indian desert it lies towards the western margins of the aravalli hills actually okay so basically it lies towards the western part of the aravalli hills okay till the aravalli hills we are having the peninsular plateau and beyond the aravalli hills in the western side of the aravalli hills okay it lies the indian desert and the indian desert it is an undulating plain okay like the northern plain is a flat plain but the indian desert it is a undulating plain ups and down ups and down and which is covered with the sand dunes actually so basically in the indian desert most of the uh, like uh, area is covered by the sand dunes and all this region receives very low rainfall below 150 mm per year and the part of the indian desert there receives a very less rainfall below 150 mm per year that is the amount of rainfall received in the indian desert is very less as compared to the other parts of our country and this is the reason that the indian desert is very arid in nature it is very dry in nature and the vegetation cover is also very low vegetation cover means the number of trees plants the and all okay they are very low in this region okay because the amount of water available in this region is very much limited this part of the indian desert they does not have a continuous source supply of water actually so they basically depend on the rainfall okay and the amount of rainfall is also very negligible it is also very less okay below 150 mm actually some of the important features of the indian desert is that in this indian desert the streams they appear only during the rainy season that means during the rainy season when the rainfall takes place at that time only some of the small streams and the rivers they appear okay but as soon as the rainfall stops or the uh, like uh, rainy season goes away okay the streams and the rivers they basically disappear they dry up actually so soon after they disappear in the sand as they do not have enough water to reach the sea and even the streams or the rivers of this indian desert actually they flow only for a few kilometer ever okay as because they does not have enough water okay to flow for a large uh, long distance actually so they flow for a few distance few kilometers and all few kilometer or few meters and all and then ultimately they again disappear and the most important river of this indian desert is the luni river the luni river is the only large river in this region and it is an ephemeral river actually ephemeral river basically means only during the rainy season it has its existence and when the rainy season is not there okay the luni river it gets disappeared actually as i said to you that the indian desert 
is mainly composed of the sand dunes and all. Okay, we can find the sand dunes in this Indian desert region and all. So basically, in the Indian desert, different types of sand dunes can be found. Okay, but the most important uh, characteristic, the most important type of sand dunes, which can be found in this part of the Indian deserts, are the barkans. Okay, the barkans or the barchans actually. They are the crescent shaped sand dunes. Okay, they are the crescent shaped dunes which cover a larger areas, but longitudinal dunes become more prominent near the Indo-Pakistan border. So basically, the crescent shaped sand dunes or the barkans they cover a larger part of the Indian desert. But as we move towards the Indo-Pakistan border, okay, in, along this Indo-Pakistan border, instead of the barkans or the crescent shaped sand dunes, the longitudinal dunes appear. Okay, the longitudinal dunes are, can be found. So these longitudinal dunes are actually uh, like horizontal straight sand dunes and all. But the barkans are actually, they look like the new moon. When the uh, new moon appears, actually, how does it look? It looks actually. Okay, it appears crescent shape. In, okay, crescent type actually. So that is why it is said that the barkans are the crescent shape sand dunes. Okay, so the Indian desert, though it does not occupy a very large part of our country, but it is of very important significance because it makes our country okay, enriched with all the physiographic features, like we are having the mountains, plateaus, plains and all. So the Indian desert and the coastal plains and the islands also, when they are together at it with the physiographic divisions of our country, our country becomes enriched with almost all the physiographic divisions of our country. Okay, so this is what about the Indian desert. Okay, so basically the Indian desert is found in the northwestern part of the Aravali Hills. Okay, and it is confined to the state of Rajasthan. Okay, some part of the Indian desert, in some part of the Indian desert, nowadays actually, agricultural practice has become developed. Okay, people are growing some uh, types of crops actually, which require less rainfall. Okay, and it has become possible because of the irrigation facilities. Okay, because of the irrigation facilities which are now available actually, because of these irrigation facilities, okay, the farmers are now able to grow some amount of crops, some types of crops, basically the crops which grows well in very less amount of rainfall. Okay, so this is what about the Indian desert as an important physiographic division of our country. So the next important physiographic division of India, which I'm going to discuss now, is the coastal plains. Okay, the coastal plains are basically the plain areas which has been formed along the Arabian Sea and along the Bay of Bengal. Okay, so when the rivers, they went into this Arabian Sea or along the Bay of Bengal, okay, some plain areas has been formed in this region actually. Okay, so those plain areas which has been formed along the coast of Arabian Sea and along the coast of the Bay of Bengal in the east are known as the coastal plains. So these coastal plains are also known as the western coastal plain, which can be found along the Arabian Sea. Okay, and the eastern coastal plain, which can be found along the Bay of Bengal. The peninsular plateau is flanked by the narrow stretch by the stretch of narrow coastal strips running along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal on the east. So the peninsular plateau is mainly flanked by the narrow stretch of coastal strips. Okay, along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal in the east. So when I was discussing about the peninsular plateau region, okay, at that time I have said about the Western Ghat and the Eastern Ghat. So basically the Western Ghat, it marks the westernmost border of the peninsula plateau, that is the Deccan plateau, and the Eastern Ghat, they mark the easternmost border of the peninsula plateau. So beyond the Western Ghat, a narrow strip of plain area lies between the Arabian Sea. Okay, between the Arabian Sea and the Western Ghat, a very narrow strip of plain area is there, which is known as the Western Coastal Plain. Okay, and Along the Bay of Bengal, okay, after beyond the Eastern Ghat and, and in between the Bay of Bengal, a wider plain lies actually, okay, in the coast actually, that is known as the Eastern Coastal Plain actually. Okay, so the Western Coastal Plain or which is sandwiched between the Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea is a narrow plain actually. 
the western coastal plain is it is mainly sandwiched between the western ghat and the arabian sea okay and it is a narrow plain okay the plain is very narrower actually it is not so much wider as compared to the eastern coastal plain okay the most important characteristics of this western coastal plain is that the western coastal plain is very narrow okay it is very narrow in the middle but towards the north and towards the south actually they are little bit wider as compared to the middle portion actually and it may be the western coastal plain is mainly divided into three sections okay the western coastal plain is mainly divided into three sections the northern part of the coast is called the konkan coast which can be found in the uh, along the coast of mumbai and goa okay the central part of this western coastal plain is known as the karnat plain which can be found in karnataka okay while the southern stretch while the southernmost part of the western coastal plain is known as the malabar coast which can be found in the uh, in the coastal areas of kerala actually okay so these are the three sections of the coastal plains okay these are the three sections of the indian coastal plains actually western coastal plain so i am just repeating once again that the coastal area or the coastal plain which lies between the arabian sea and the western ghat is known as the western coastal plain and it is a very narrow strip of plain area which is can be divided into three major sections the konkan coast which is mainly found in the coast of mumbai and goa the karnat plain which can be found in the coastal areas of karnataka and the southern part is known as the malabar coast which can be found along the coastal areas of the state of kerala actually okay so this is what about the western coastal plain the western coastal plain as it is a narrow plain okay and here in this uh, western coastal plain actually okay the land is the plain area is not so much fertile okay the plain area is not so much fertile so this is why agricultural practice is very much limited okay agricultural practice is very much limited in this part okay agricultural practice is very much confined in this western coastal plain and this western coastal plain it is a type of submerged plain the western coastal plain it is a type of a sub submerged plain actually submerged plain basically means a part of the plain has been submerged under the oceanic water okay a part of the plain has been submerged under the oceanic water basically okay whereas now we are going to study about the eastern coastal plain actually okay whereas the eastern coastal plain it lies between the eastern ghat and the bay of bengal and it is a wider plain wider and a level plain okay it is a much wider and a level plain which can be found okay which is uh, which is fertile in nature actually okay which is much fertile in nature as compared to the western coastal plain now see so the part of the plain which lies between the bay of bengal and the eastern ghat is known as the eastern coastal plain and it is much fertile as compared to the western coastal plain but the main thing is that this eastern coastal plain is emergent in nature like the western coastal plain is submergent in nature but the eastern coastal plain is emergent in nature it has been formed because of emergence okay because of the deposition of the sediments brought down by the major rivers and all okay in the eastern coastal plain we can uh, like uh, the eastern coastal plain is mainly divided into two sections the western coastal plain was divided into three sections but the eastern coastal plain is divided into two sections one is the northern circle and another one is the koramandal coast okay so the northern part of the eastern coastal plain okay the northern part of the eastern coastal plain is known as the northern circle whereas the southern part of the eastern coastal plain is known as the koramandal coast so this koramandal coast can be found along the coastal areas of tamil nadu okay in this part of the eastern coastal plain okay this part of the eastern coastal plain is uh, uh, we can find the formation of the deltas and all okay we can find the formation of the deltas because some of the important rivers actually when they drain into the bay of bengal before draining into the bay of bay of bengal they deposit the sediment which has been brought down by them okay so this deposits uh, sediment deposits lead to the formation of the deltas and all okay the large rivers such as the mahanadi the godavari the krishna and the kaveri 
they have formed extensive delta on this coast. Okay, they have formed extensive delta on this coast actually. Okay, so because of the formation of the delta as well as because of the deposition of the fine sediments brought down by the rivers and all, this part of the eastern coastal plain is very much fertile. Okay, here we can find the deposits of alluvial soil. Some amount of alluvial deposits can be found in this plain area, coastal plain, eastern coastal plain. Okay, and it is much fertile actually. And this is why the eastern coastal plain is also used for agricultural purpose, like the Tamil Nadu coast. Okay, the Tamil Nadu coast is mainly used for rice cultivation and all. Okay, a special variety of rice means which can grow in the saline water condition can be, okay, it can be uh, uh, grown in this region actually. Okay, it can be grown in this region. Okay, so this is what about the eastern coastal plain. Uh, one thing I have forgot to mention is that the western, in the western coastal plain, we basically find the uh, like formation of the estuary. The estuaries can be found. Okay. But whereas in the eastern coastal plain, we can uh, like the formation of the deltas are there. Okay. So estuaries can be found in the western coastal plain and deltas can be found in the eastern coastal plain. And the important feature of this eastern coastal plain is that in this eastern coastal plain, we are having uh, one of the largest uh, lake of in this region actually. Okay, salt water lake you can say. So the Lake Chilika is an important feature along the eastern coastal plain which can be found in this part. Okay, the Lake Chilika which is one of the uh, largest salt water lake actually, it can be found in this eastern coastal plain. Okay, and the Lake Chilika is the largest salt water lake in India. Okay, and it lies in the state of Odisha to the south of the Mahanadi Delta. So basically, the eastern coastal plain, it lies in the south of Odisha, actually, in the southern part of Odisha. Okay. And it is mainly found along uh, near the Mahanadi, Mahanadi Delta, actually. Okay. So, uh, the river Mahanadi, which flows through Odisha, actually, it can be found near this region. So this Lake Chilika is one of the important uh, physical features in this eastern coastal plain. And it also provides livelihood to many number of people. Okay. This Lake Chilika provides livelihood to many number of people because many number of people, they are dependent on Lake Chilika for their livelihood because they uh, go for fishing and all. Okay, fishing is the main livelihood of the people living in this region actually. So this is what about the coastal plain. Okay, so the coastal plains can be divided into two types. One is the eastern coastal plain and the one is the western coastal plain. So eastern coastal plain can be found along the Bay of Bengal and the western coastal plain can be found along the Arabian Sea. Okay, so this is what about the coastal plains of our country. And also we have discussed about the desert. Okay, that is the Indian desert of our country. So these two physiographic divisions of our country, that is the Indian desert and the coastal plain, though they does not occupy a very large geographical area, but they are very significant. Okay, they are very significant or they are very important landforms of our country. 